Hi, and welcome to the first video in the Measure Theory video series. If you don't already know set theory, which we're going to be using, you will need to watch the set theory video. A link to that will be placed in, in this slide. Um, over the course of these videos, we will first focus on the rules and specifications of measure theory. And this will take several videos um, to provide a solid foundation and a concrete explanation. In the last few videos of this series, we will go over the application of measure theory, primarily as it is used in applied research for understanding the data generating process inherent in any empirical project. We will start measure theory by discussing what a function is, because functions will be used throughout the explanation of measure theory. A function establishes a relationship between two sets a set called the domain, here represented by set S, and a set called the range, here represented by R, set R. A function maps each element in the domain to only one element in the range. Each element in the domain to only one element in the range. The connection from domain to range is between the elements in each set and starts from an element in the domain and connects that element to an element in the range. The connection describes the relationship between the elements in the domain and those in the range. In this picture, some elements in the range have more than one element from the domain mapping to it, or one element in the range is associated with more than one element in the domain, and that is okay. So for example, 36 has three elements from the domain mapping to it. It's also okay, as we see here, if there are elements in the range that have zero or no elements from the domain mapping to them. For example, 13 doesn't have anything coming from the domain. And that's also okay. But remember, that for the elements in the domain, each and every element must map to the range, and each and every element must map to only one element in the range. So this can't have multiple um, mappings to the range. So let's do an example. For example, suppose each element in the domain is a business and the function maps to a number in the range, in this case, the real number line. The function indicates the number of health plans um, each business offers its employee. This is a function. It's a function because every element in the domain is mapping to an element in the range and mapping to only one element in the range. So this is a function. But Suppose again, each element in the domain is a business and the elements in the range are the names of the insurance companies and the function maps each business in the domain to the names of all the health insurance companies offered by the business. This is not a function. Even though every element in the domain maps to the range, some of these elements map to more than one element in the range, so therefore this is not a function. Now that we've established the specifications of a function, the question is, what if you want to know something about a group or set of elements in the domain? For example, what if you want to know an aggregate value of the average number of health insurance plans these businesses offer their employees by type of business. So you want to know what is the average number of plans by restaurants, by banks, by hotels, or by car manufacturers. The problem is that a function makes an assignment from an element in the domain to a value in the range. And I want to emphasize that the function takes as its argument an element. So a function cannot assign a value to something that's not in its domain. In our example, businesses grouped by type 
are subsets of elements in the domain, and subsets of elements are not elements in the domain. So the function cannot assign a relationship between the businesses grouped by type and the average number of health insurance plans offered because restaurants or banks are not elements in the domain. So an individual bank here is an element and could be mapped and, and that would work, but banks as a group, that's not an element in this particular domain, and so that won't work. So how can you assign values to groups of elements in the domain in addition to the individual elements if you want? The solution is that we have to create a special kind of domain, a domain that contains all of the items in set S that you want to assign relationships to. If you want to assign a value to a subset of the domain, then you need to create a new domain where that subset is an element of the domain. And remember, elements can be sets, or another way of saying that is a set can be an element of another set. Here's an example of that. We have a set we're calling S old, and it has the elements A, B, and C, and the function assigns 1 to A, 2 to B, and 3 to C. But say you're really interested in these subsets here. You're interested in subset BC or even the whole set ABC. And say you're interested in assigning numbers that have to do with the, the summation of the values of the function assigned to the individual elements. Then you need another domain. We're going to call this new domain S new. And it has the subset that we're interested in, subset BC and, and the set ABC. So the function that we're going to use for this new domain to the range um, assigns the value that represents the summation. So you know we have the um, old elements here, and A is still 1, B is still 2, and C is still 3. Um, but for the, for the subset that we included, B, C, the function assigns um, the summation, so b is 2 and c is 3, else 2 plus 3 is 5, so it assigns the value 5. Um, for this set, a, b, c, um, the, sum, the, the function assigns the summation of 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6, so a, b, c is assigned 6. So with s new, you have the ability to understand the set s and the relationship described by the function in a more expansive way, in a way that fits what you're interested in, if you are interested in these subsets. So that's all for class one on functions. This last slide introduced what we're going to go into in the next class um, on measurable spaces and sigma algebras. We will go into how to make this new domain using systematic rules rather than in the haphazard manner that we just did. And if you liked this presentation on functions, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to find all the other measure theory videos plus other topics. And if you have any questions, concerns, or criticisms, just leave a comment below. And thank you for watching.